video is for any Sycamore class viewers. When I first started my YouTube channel, I promised some of you a custom bomb video, and at last I've sourced a big enough tin. So here is a special video for you, just in time before you leave primary school. Safety first. This video has been made safely. I've managed the risks and I've kept myself and my helpers safe. Do not try this yourself. The custard bomb in this video, the main experiment of the video, could be explained with chemistry because it is a chemical reaction, a combustion reaction. And there is interesting chemistry behind how the surface area affects the rate of the reaction. But those of you who know me know my favourite area of science is physics. So I'm going to focus on the ideas about energy and pressure to explain what you will see. Energy comes in lots of different forms. There's lots of different types of energy. In our custard powder for the custard bomb, there's lots of chemical energy stored inside. When we burn it in the oxygen in the combustion reaction, we'll transfer that chemical energy into different types. Your job is to see how many different types of energy you can name after you've seen the custard bomb experiment. It's not just energy that's going to be important to explain the custard bomb though. So before the main feature, let's have a look at another little experiment so I can help you think about pressure. Here on Earth, we have an atmosphere, the air. The air is made up of gases and those gases are made up from particles. These particles are zooming around in all directions and they're hitting you all the time. As they hit you, the force on the area is causing a pressure, an atmospheric pressure. So if there is this pressure on us, why don't we feel it? Well, we don't feel it because everything's balanced. You've also got a pressure inside your body pushing out and that's equal to the pressure of the atmosphere pushing on you. So overall, you don't feel it. So here's a Coke can. It's an empty Coke can. Well, it's empty of Coke. It's still filled with air and I have put a little bit of water in the bottom of the can too. So inside the can right now, there are air particles zooming about in all directions and hitting the can from the inside, pushing out. There's also some water in the bottom of the can and the particles in the water are moving about, changing places, but they're not zooming about all around the can yet. So inside the can, we've got air and water particles both pushing out onto the can. And outside the can, we've got the air pushing onto the can. So at the moment, the pressure is balanced. Nothing much is changing. But we're heating up the can. You'll probably know what happens to water when you heat it up. As the particles gain more and more thermal energy from the hob, those particles can start moving faster. So the air particles are zooming about even faster and hitting the sides of the can even harder than before. As the particles get more kinetic energy, as they start moving more, the same happens with the water. But eventually the water will boil. It will turn from a liquid to a gas and we call that gas steam. As the water particles get enough thermal energy and they move more, having more kinetic energy, those particles can break away from each other and zoom about in the can just like the air. Now this takes a little while. You'll hear it start to boil, but I'm going to cut the video so that you don't have to wait the whole time it takes till we start seeing some steam escaping from the top of the can. That steam is what we need to push the air out of the can. So the can is eventually just filled with steam. 
You may have noticed the bowl of iced water. That's ready because we are going to cool the steam back down. By cooling the steam back down really quickly, we can condense it back to a liquid, change it back from a gas back to being a liquid. And with the can upside down, it will pour out the hole at the top, which will then be at the bottom. The can will empty, empty of particles. We'll leave the can without particles inside to push out on the can anymore. But of course there is still air outside the can though, and that is pushing on the can. So if you don't already know what happens, you should be able to predict what happens. With a bit of video editing so you haven't got to wait for the steam to be ready, we'll show you now what's going to happen when we get rid of the particles from inside the can, but the air particles are still outside the can. Watch carefully. You can see the can has imploded. The can has crushed and it was the air outside that did that. The same air that's hitting you right now. So if the pressure inside is different than the pressure outside, things start to happen. If the pressure outside is bigger than the pressure inside, we get implosions. Have you already started to work out what's going to happen with something that explodes then? So the time has come. It's time for the custard bomb. You're ready to explain it. Remember, there's lots of chemical energy trapped in the custard powder and we're going to change that energy. We're going to transfer it into different types of energy and you've got to spot what different types of energy it changes into. But also... In this custard bomb, I'm setting up a rapid combustion in a confined space. The products of this combustion are lots of gases, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide and water vapour. So think about what's going to happen to the pressure inside the can compared with the atmospheric pressure outside to see if you can explain what you see next. So it's time to check your ideas. What energy transfers did you spot? We started with chemical energy in the custard powder. And as that lid flew off the top, I hope you heard the bang, some sound energy. I hope you saw the flames, there was light energy. And I promise you the flames were hot, there was thermal energy. As the lid flew off the top, it was moving, it had kinetic energy, and at the top there was gravitational potential energy. How many did you spot? And finally, can you explain why the lid flies off? In our custard bomb, we set up a rapid combustion in the confined space. The products of the combustion of the glucose in the custard powder and the oxygen in the air in the tin were carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide and water vapour. Lots and lots of gases squished, biting inside the tin. So the pressure inside the can got much, much greater than the atmospheric pressure on the outside of the can. So what you saw was an explosion. I hope you enjoyed the video after waiting so long for it and I wish you all a smooth transition to high school. Remember you can always request a video when you need help with your physics. Don't forget to like so that I can keep making the videos. Comment! Especially to request other revision topics. Subscribe so you can get notifications of when my next video gets uploaded. <laughs> <laughs>